I gotta show you guys something. So, back here, we're installing a new library. I'm unpacking a ton of books. There's boxes all over the place here. I'm about halfway done unpacking this stuff. And I think we need to talk about some stuff. So this is kind of a interesting situation we have going on here. I mean, there's already a plethora of books here, all basically on music, history of music, artists, information on singles, the recording processes of so much stuff, like stuff I didn't know existed out here. Stuff that when you Google it is really hard to find. So how did I get all these? Kind of a sad story, actually. So we got these books from kind of a friend of a friend of a friend of a friend. This person had some health issues, but was basically had this one hobby, music. The passion was music and the consumption of music and knowing everything there was to know about music. The producers, all the hits from any year. What song was recorded in what studio by what producer? Who all was there? What did they play? What instruments were they? Thus, you have this extensive collection of material. As I'm pulling these out and, and realizing what's all here, and it's gonna take me a long time to figure out what is actually here. The complete works of Irving Berlin. Even flipping through the pages as I'm pulling stuff out, it's, it's interesting. It's got me thinking about my own pursuit of knowledge in this whole thing of music. Like, I feel like I am very niche down in my wealth of knowledge in my given area. I'm not saying that I hold any more or less knowledge than any other individual person. That's not what I'm talking about. More this pursuit of an art form that's pretty subjective by its nature, and that's what makes it beautiful, right? But this grasping at knowledge and learning and learning and learning can be just that. It has to be just that. It has to be a pursuit of love and intention that makes you fulfilled as an individual. Complete lyrics of Johnny Mercer. It's actually a really good documentary on Johnny Mercer. And the amount of songs that this dude wrote will just blow you away. To be completely blunt here, this is a dead man's collection. That knowledge stopped with that person. Now it's here in the form of these books, which I'm honored to have and very excited to have and did not anticipate having. But something like this makes you feel a little small. Whoop. <laughs> Detroit 67, the year that changed soul. I mean, there are so many, so many things here. And I know somebody out there is going to say like, look, music is music. How many times do we hear that? Anytime there's anything instructional about music, it's almost like you graduated to this elitist status of music. And maybe that's true. I don't know. But... <laughs> There's something about learning the tools that you're working with that make you respect the art form that you're working with then. Woodworking, for example. You may not know everything about woodworking or everything there is to know about woodworking, but knowing a little bit of the history about how things were done, knowing different building methods, knowing why we do certain things now, what we used to do in the past, and why this might work better, can teach you so much about how you approach a project. Maybe some people like the old way of doing things, and that's completely valid. Music's the same way. How many different ways are there to make a record? How many different thought processes are there in constructing lyrics to a song? How many different genres are there? And it's easy to forget that these people were people, <laughs> that they were humans, that they were going through crap when they weren't legends. A thousand record covers. <laughs> I mean, it's so random, but it's so cool. Still opening boxes, and who knows what's gonna come out. <laughs> Elvis in Vegas. Ranking the stereo LP era. The monkeys. <laughs> 
When we get to do something like music or making records, or even if it's not like your full-time career, if this is like a hobby that you do just for fun, making records with your friends, like this is something that was not approachable all the time. I mean, there weren't a lot of home studios in the 80s. <laughs> Would Elvis be Elvis if everybody had access to a Focusrite Scarlet in the 60s? And it's so easy to take that for granted that now stuff is objectively easier than it was to do back then. The barrier to entry for music has become almost too easy to the point where we obsess over the stupid minutia of making music that ultimately doesn't make any amount of difference to a listener. We've optimized this process to a point where the art kind of takes a back seat to the methods, and that can't happen. Of course you have to have your techniques down. You have to have the tools to do it. And if you're doing this competitively, i.e. in like a, a market of some kind, or if you're working on label stuff, like you have to be competitive on some level. The tools to do the job need to be there, and gear alone is never gonna make a, a bad record good. There has to be this kind of cohesive thing of not even good gear, but the correct gear for the sound you're trying to achieve and a good song and good material. And we definitely get lazy in both of those areas, utilizing tools that aren't necessarily correct for a certain individual. It seems like YouTube is filled with the best microphone. And although I highlight a lot of microphones on my channel, I try to say through every single video, there is no best. There's no best microphone of any kind. <laughs> and that whole thing is silly. It's hyperbolic, I get it. You have to get the click on YouTube. This is what makes YouTube YouTube. I get it. But it's like things have become so easy and so approachable that we want one thing that does everything for us. So we have one microphone and we're not really willing to admit that maybe this one mic that we have that sounds great and is a good microphone is objectively the wrong microphone for this current person that we're recording at the moment. So we try to fix it with plugins and we try to fix it with these weird techniques. And sometimes it's just change the mic, capture a good performance, and then you don't need all this crap on the back end. The reality of my situation here is I'm, I'm gonna be diving through a mountain of literature I'm learning a whole lot because this stuff interests me. The impossible rise of Warner Brothers Records, Sonic Boom. Hendrix to Fleetwood Mac to Madonna to Prince. I think this is important. I think learning about this craft is important. Does that mean go out and get a bunch of books? Absolutely not. This is kind of overwhelming right now. <laughs> What I'm realizing going through some of this, and I found some bookmarks with some of this guy's notes, the amount of knowledge he had. I mean, this guy would have been a walking encyclopedia. And it's awesome and like horribly sad at the same time, knowing that it just stopped with that person. And that someday it's gonna stop with me and my own pursuit of what I do. I think a part of that is why I put some of this stuff out on YouTube. Like, this stuff's difficult. <laughs> Making music is difficult. Figuring out how to make records that sound even halfway decent is difficult. Figuring out how to trust yourself in the process of making any kind of art is difficult. Now do all that as a business. <laughs> it's difficult and there's not a whole lot of voices out there. So when I started this whole thing, it was kind of, let me toss out there what works and what doesn't. Hmm. I didn't expect today to get so nostalgic, I suppose. I'm not going to tell you anything you don't already know, but one day we're all going to die. And everything that we have going for us, like we can't take this stuff with us. We can't take the knowledge that we have about how to EQ that kick drum just the way we like it with us. It, it stops unless you decide to share that information. That was one part of the industry that always frustrated me. Getting into making records is easy. Figuring out how to make good records is hard. And there are arbitrary secrets kept by individuals. People who want to keep like drum samples secrets as if that's going to be the number one factor and why they're getting gold records and you're not. I think sometimes the answer is a whole lot easier than that. And it's just that you need to make the art that you like. And for you to figure out what art you like, you have to learn about art. I mean, as stupid as it was in college, 
I really wished I would have paid more attention in my music appreciation class or music history classes because there's uh, so much knowledge. All of what we do in human history is just an accumulation of the knowledge of those that came before us. And <laughs> not that this is everything by any stretch of the imagination, but there's definitely a push now that any amount of knowledge in this area is unfashionable or elitist or that you just make music with your ears, bro. That's completely true. Completely true. But go with me for a second here. If you operate within the certain boundaries of your own musical taste, there may be this big. There are so many other genres out there that maybe you're not even aware of. Records that have been made that you never heard. B-sides that never got released. All of those artists had influences. All of those influences had influences. All of those influences had influences. All this stuff goes back. It's an accumulation of what came before it. And I think in neglecting that fact, we kind of spoil this art form, not just for other people, but for ourselves. If you tend to think that there's some music out there that's not worth your time or that isn't music or that you can't make yourself objectively stop and take a look at it from an informed perspective of where this came from, where they're trying to get with it, and that it's just not real music, makes you irrelevant pretty darn quick. I feel like this is coming back to, <laughs> to something that I say on the channel a lot, that music is made by humans and you're not going to like every human. The pursuit of knowledge is one thing, but actually putting it into practice is a whole different thing. Ultimately, it has to come from a place of genuinely wanting to understand the art form that we're participating in to make the best art possible for ourselves to be fulfilled in what we're doing for the clients that we're working with to give them the best possible project because you're not always going to have the exact same taste as the people that you're working with. So having as large of a knowledge pool to work from is just going to benefit you and make you that much better <laughs> and make you faster at understanding what they're trying to achieve. It also makes you realize how horribly short of a time we have to do this. This is an awesome career to get to do music or anything surrounding music or art of any kind. <laughs> to be able to participate in something like that, that fulfills who you are, like from deep down in your soul, right? One day, all these books are gonna go to somebody else and whatever knowledge I've accumulated is just gonna stop with me. What are your books? What knowledge are you keeping a little too close to the vest that you should get out there? What gaps do you have in your knowledge that maybe you need to try to fill a little bit more of, not just for yourself, but for those around you? Where do you think this whole thing's bullcrap? <laughs> I'm Resident Loser Jeremy. I gotta sort some books.